Alrighty, I just wanted to document this. This is my 1982 parts board. I've basically resurrected it. Um, I did a bit of a modification to it, as you can see here. Come on, focus. There we go. That's the 556 timer that generates the reset pulse. As you can see, I have pin 9 uh, soldered to a, this, this 100 ohm resistor. Comes over to this track here, which is the rest of the reset line. On another board, I actually severed the trace and did the modification a little bit differently. But basically, the reason for this modification is this now allows this board to operate with modern accessories. Normally, 1982 boards do not operate whatsoever with 1541 Ultimate, Easy Flash, etc., etc. This thing here is the uh, Swinset Ultimate. And uh, I'll show you some uh, pretty blinking lights here in just a second. This is a cartridge that I've been playing around with. Burning some game images to it. Uh, just a second and I'll get something going here. Alright. Here's Platman. It's a pretty cool game. This is the really cool thing about the Swinset Ultimate. You got blinking lights. It has four separate LEDs on it. Uh, three of them are for the three SID channels. There you go, there's the third one. There's another one that's not lighting right now, and it's a blue light. I'm not exactly what that's used for. I think it's for some sort of custom Mahoney digital samples or something Mahoney I don't I don't remember what it was in the readme file but interestingly enough on choplifter the explosion noise actually lights that LED so who knows so anyways this is just the normal handmade cartridge so that's not anything impressive I'll show you easy flash working on this thing just a second All right, easy flash. Now normally when you hit the button to, on a 1982 board, if you were to pick something from this menu, all you would get is a flashing pattern on the border here. As you can see, it now works correctly. The basic theory of operation here is that Rather than buffering the output from this 556 chip, they just hooked it directly to the reset line. And apparently this chip can sync a, quite a bit of current. So by sticking a 100 ohm resistor in line with it, reduces the amount of current this thing can sync. So when cartridges attempt to generate their own reset, it can overcome this chip. So that's basically the only thing that's actually wrong with these 1982 boards. Those are a bunch of dead SID chips and PLAs and stuff, by the way. <laughs> got a bunch of them. There's more. This is a giant bag of nothing but dead Commodore chips. There's all kinds of stuff in here. RAM, ROMs, PLAs, CPUs, VIC chips. There's even some plus four. Heads and CPUs in there. Anyways, uh, I'll go ahead. I would show the easy or the 1541 Ultimate, but you'll just have to take my word for it. It does operate. Oh yeah, no keyboard hooked up. But anyways, uh, I'm thinking of kind of doing a really weird project with this board now that I have it running again. I'm thinking of populating it with really weird chips, like using an 8500 CPU, uh, possibly a uh, Plankton PLA substitute, running an 8562 VIC from C64Cs in it, uh, maybe running the low power CIAs. Uh, that would be interesting. So <laughs> you could turn a you know composite only 1982 board into an extremely low power. Uh, system if you wanted to 
But anyways, it's just my uh, dumb little demonstration here. So I uh, hope you enjoy.